Hello again to all you wonderful folks out there in Fragcom and welcome to this latest episode of Mag's Frags where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. My name's Paul and it's my mission to help you find your perfect signature scent. And today I'm bringing you an exclusive first look at this latest release from Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, which made its grand entrance into the world of men's fragrances just a matter of days ago now here in the UK during March 2024. This one is called Scandal Porom Absolu, uh, which is the third creation in the Scandal Porom lineup following the launch of the original back in 2021. And then we saw the release of the Le Parfum Flanker a year later in 2022. This one, however, caught my attention because it includes one of my personal favourite fragrance notes, which is chestnut. And if you're a regular to the channel, you'll already know just how much I love Stronger With You Intensely by Emporio Armani, which also has a prominent chestnut, uh, chestnut note at its core. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how this one compares to uh, the Stronger With You Intensely. Uh, but there's also a fruity top note in this listed in the official note breakdown that I've not come across before. So hopefully this new novel concoction uh, will take the latest flanker into a slightly different uh, direction to the other previous uh, Scandal uh, flankers. It comes in a, a parfum concentration and it's available in the usual three bottle sizes of 50ml, 100ml and also the 150ml variants. I went down the middle and I picked up this 100ml size for uh, £97, which is also refillable just like the other two uh, previous releases. Okay, so into the presentation, and as with all Jean-Paul Gaultier perfumes, the level of presentation that you get with these are just absolutely top quality. The box uh, comes wrapped in a, a really plush uh, red velvet and it features gold metallic branding. It feels really premium and luxurious when you're handling it and there's just no way that I could toss this in the bin like I do with most of my other fragrance boxes. On the front is the Scandal logo with the Jean-Paul Gaultier logo just underneath it. Then below that is the name of the flanker and also then the size and the concentration right down at the bottom. At the top is a, another Scandal logo and then around the back there's all your product information and uh, a QR code uh, which takes you to the Scandal universe apparently. Uh, but then at the bottom is where you'll locate the batch code and the batch code on this one is 33402. The bottle is also a thing of beauty and this time it comes in a gold to clear gradient and the juice inside is also like a golden colour. There's the Scandal branding on the front printed in a metallic gold finish and the opulent look is completed by this regal looking crown design uh, of the cap. The glass on this is really chunky and combined with the, uh, the weighty metal cap it feels super heavy when you're holding it and it's just like a brick so definitely, you definitely don't want to be uh, going dropping this on your foot. You get a gold atomizer featuring the Jean-Paul Gaultier logo at the top, which delivers a really nice, satisfying, smooth blast of juice. And like I touched on earlier, it is a, a refillable bottle and the, uh, the atomizer does screw off despite it being very tight when you get it straight out of the box. So you might need to uh, maybe use a cable tie or something like that to help you grip it when you uh, first want to refill it. But like I say, when it comes to uh, presentation and packaging design, Jean-Paul Gaultier are uh, a pretty hard act to follow. Okay, so into the note breakdown now. And there's actually only three notes officially listed uh, in this one on the official Jean-Paul Gaultier website. And uh, the top note in this is a note called Myra Bell. I think that's how you pronounce it. In the heart, we've got chestnut. And the base note in this one is sandalwood. Okay, so from the initial first spray of this, you'll be greeted by the Mirabelle note, which is a, a delicate and somewhat rare variety of plum, which produces a sweet and fruity essence. However, it's not a, a dense sweetness like the plum note found in some fragrances like Initio Side Effect or Tom Ford's Plum Japonais, etc. This is a brighter tart plum that smells like uh, it's not fully ripened and still contains some of the scent of the green leaves. However, it's not long before it progresses through to the heart of the scent where the rich earthy essence of the chestnut comes through, which brings with it a deep nutty warmth that blends really well with the semi-sweet fruitiness of that Mirabelle note. Neither of these two notes are listed in the uh, previous releases, uh, but I'd say that the opening does smell very similar to the other two Scandal Poron flankers, 
albeit uh, with this one being a tiny bit sweeter and a touch more smooth and refined smelling. It's probably the uh, woodiness of the sandalwood in the base that's uh, reminding me of the previous iterations. And although there is a, a slight difference when you compare all three versions side by side, you'll definitely recognise the Scandal Perom DNA pretty much from the get-go with this one. The uh, chestnut note is perhaps not quite as prominent as I thought it might be, and I, I personally pick up more on the smooth silky sandalwood note, and maybe even a very mild earthy patchouli that's kind of way off in the background. Uh, but if you are familiar with the chestnut note, it is definitely in there, and you will detect some lovely nuttiness once it's dried down. However, when all the accords blend together, it produces a warm, comforting gourmand type scent profile, with a savoury, biscuity like aroma. The uh, gentle sweetness of the plum does stay throughout the life of the scent, which just kind of rounds everything out and it just softens it all and it just kind of um, sweetens up the drier, earthier tones. So if you can imagine walking past a bakery on a morning and smelling the warm pastries, that's the kind of aroma that this produces uh, once it's all dried down. And it stays quite linear after that and it doesn't really change uh, much as the hours tick by. It's a very likeable and easy to wear scent with a seductive charm that will no doubt bring in tons of compliments. However, if um, if you own either of the other two Scandal Perron flankers, then this uh, there might not be that much of a difference for you to drop another £100 plus on this one, even though I would say that this is my new favourite one of the three. Yeah, this is a fairly versatile scent that'd be great in a wide variety of situations. Uh, but ideally, you'd be more likely to wear it on colder days and evenings when you're just looking for something a little bit more warm and comforting. The perfect situation for this one would be a date night, when you need something safe and reliable. Uh, it's a classy and sophisticated smelling scent that produces a masculine but relaxed aroma on the whole. Uh, but it does also have uh, a bit of a playful side with that small amount of fruity sweetness that's fun without coming off smelling juvenile in any way. It's probably too warm and sweet for the summertime and perhaps even to wear as a daytime work scent if you uh, work in a small office or a, a confined space, etc. But apart from that, I think it'd be a, a pretty decent all-rounder. It's suitable for guys of any age and it's just a, a safe and solid fragrance that will basically just get the job done. Yeah, in terms of the performance, I haven't worn it around people yet to be able to receive uh, much feedback on it. But I can tell that it's going to leave a pretty decent scent trail because I've been getting really strong wash from it all day. And I sprayed this about six hours ago now, and it's still as potent now as when I first sprayed it. However, because it's a, a warmer gourmand type scent profile, it probably won't be as overpowering and as room filling as fragrances that contain notes like oak moss or leather or ambroxan that really tend to cut through the air. This one on the other hand will definitely get you noticed, but without choking people out. And because it's a, a parfum concentration, it's going to last all day without any problem at all. It does have that ambery sweetness that can get a little bit sickly if you go mental on the sprayer. Uh, so I'd say maybe four or five sprays is more than enough. I have read a few nonsense reviews already on Fragrantica that were posted well before it even came out, stating that it's weak and it doesn't perform, all that kind of uh, palaver. Uh, but don't take any notice of these attention seekers. It's uh, from Jean-Paul Gaultier, who made some of the most beast mode uh, designer fragrances ever, so uh, performance on this is definitely not going to be an issue. Okay, so I would say that although this is not massively different to the previous two releases, it is different enough to make it my new favourite of the three. It's definitely smoother and less synthetic smelling, and the, uh, the Mirabelle and Chestnut combo bring a touch more sweetness and nuttiness, which just makes it more rounded and refined in my opinion. It's not going to win any uniqueness awards or wow any hardcore fragrance enthusiast with its complexity, but for the vast majority of guys out there that just simply want a great smelling fragrance to wear on a night out, then I can't really think of anything negative to say about it. It's an intoxicated and captivating scent that I think most people will really enjoy. Uh, but unfortunately, I can't see it uh, prizing me away that often from my trusty Stronger With You Intensely when I want a warm hug on a cold day. The chestnut, cinnamon and caramel in this is just like a magical concoction that I'm finding to be an almost impossible act to match. 
But this uh, brand new Scandal Purim Absolu is a super solid, uh, incredible release, and I would give it a, a very respectable 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for this latest episode. But coming up tomorrow, I've got another 2024 designer release for you to discover. So if you don't want to miss that one or any of my other future uploads, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll be notified whenever I post anything new. Also, it's always great to read your comments. So uh, don't forget to keep letting me know your thoughts and your critiques and all other fragrances that feature in these videos as well as any that you might recommend for me to uh, try out for myself and uh, review in future episodes. So once again, guys, thank you very much for tuning into this latest episode today. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye-bye for now.